Hello. Um, so in the last sort of 48 hours, there's been a few problems with my internet connection. Apparently Sky Broadband has been having general problems um, and the service has been down. So if it appears at any point that I'm not making a video for an unusually long time, that will be the reason. I'll just get that out of the way. But it seems to be okay at the moment, so hopefully it will stay that way. Um, some of you may wonder why I haven't spoken more about the Catalan independence issue. It's obviously been a very newsworthy ongoing issue at the moment. Um, there's a few reasons for that. Firstly, um, there's been a lot of other things going on in the news with the Las Vegas shooting and so on. Secondly, like I say, it is an ongoing story and sometimes I'm wary about making running commentary on an ongoing situation precisely because it can change at any given time. But I'll say a few things about that and also the consequences of um, any potential second Scottish referendum here. Um, so obviously there has been this movement for Catalonia to become independent. Um, it's not a new thing, but it's all flared up obviously in the last few weeks. Um, firstly, I want to put this on record. I think the Spanish police response was over the top. I, I will never condone police violence um, or police overreach under any circumstances. So I think that was wrong and I think it was counterproductive. And the Spanish state was right to apologise for that. It was a big mistake to, you know, whilst the referendum was illegal, it went, as I understand it, against the Spanish constitution and was technically illegal, so hence the police were performing the duty and breaking up an illegal activity. It didn't particularly help in the eyes of the world to be seen to be, you know, beating up pensioners. Um, so I think that was a mistake, and I think they could have handled that better. On the other hand, quite frankly, I respect the Spanish resolve to keep their country together, and I also respect the fact that Tens of thousands of Spaniards went out to defend the unity of their nation. I know people who live in Catalonia on both sides. Um, the problem with the police brutality or, or the police overreach, it probably left a lot of people more sympathetic to the independence argument. And that's unfortunate because before that, it was the other way around. Um, any sort of declaration of independence isn't going to be recognised on a wider scale. Um, and I, I incidentally, the the nationalist leaders were going to do that, then sort of backtracked at the last minute to give scope for more negotiations. This situation is not over. And I asked a Spanish friend, is this the worst crisis Spain has faced since 1981? He said it was a tie up between this and the 2004 Madrid bombings in terms of. Um, the question marks over Spanish security. Certainly this is a very um, critical time for Spain as a country. What I would say in terms of the independence thing, it's not up to me as an outsider to tell the people of Catalonia whether they should be independent or not, but I do know that if I was Spanish, I would want Spain to stay together. Um, because as a Briton, I want Britain to stay together. So I suppose, sentimentally speaking, I'm sympathetic to um, my Spanish friends. But like I say, it's not up to me. And um, if there is any other further traction with this, I think the Spanish response shouldn't be so hard line um, because that will only drive more people to be sympathetic to, to the vote. But the important thing here is that it was an illegal referendum. And you can't simply, you know, countries have laws for a reason. If you have a situation where every time there's some people who might want independence, and as I understand it before this unrest, it was a minority, then you're going to have anarchy because you're going to have all over the world, you're going to have microcosms of arguments for independence. I mean, under this logic, the Shetland and Orkney Islands can break away from Scotland. Um, you know, where do you draw the line? Within the UK, we can look at we can look at Mercia, the historic ancient kingdom of Mercia could break away from Wessex and Northumbria. Uh, Northumbria could break away and say, "Oh, we don't want to be part of England anymore." 
because it's a historic region with a unique identity. So where do you draw the line? That's my issue with independence movements, that where do you draw a line with this? I think you can have a situation within a state of respecting a unique identity. So say, for example, with Catalonia, and this is not me telling people whether or not it should be independent, it's rather an observation. We could say Catalonia has a unique culture, a unique identity that's different from the rest of Spain, but it is also part of Spain. That's the way I would look at it. Now, within the United Kingdom context, it's the same thing. Scotland and England are very different culturally, and that's fine. You can find many examples within great nations of of diversity, but that doesn't mean it should be independence. It should be separatism. Now, the SNP conference, surprise, surprise, Nicola Sturgeon has been bringing up the issue of independence again and saying that she isn't backing away from it. Well, I personally think this is her internal politics. She's under pressure from her base supporters to always pitch for independence. In my opinion, it's the only thing the SNP is really about. In my opinion, the whole social democratic centre-left programme that they put forward is it's secondary. Let's be clear, the Scottish National Party is first and foremost a nationalist party that exists for the breakup of the United Kingdom. Now, SM people will people will say, oh, it's negative. You're being negative. It's scaremongering. But you cannot gloss it over any other way. Scottish independence equals the breakup of the United Kingdom. You can't pretend otherwise. You can't have Scottish independence without the United Kingdom breaking up. And as far as I'm concerned, the United Kingdom is the epitome of the British state. So you break up the United Kingdom, you are breaking up Great Britain. You you are damaging and destroying the sacred identity of this island nation. And I make no apology for the words I'm using. This is something I take very, very seriously. It's something I've got very strong views on. And it's not a case of, oh, well, they have a different opinion. I respect their opinion. I don't respect their opinion. Because as far as I'm concerned, Scottish separatism equals a threat to my country. The United Kingdom, I've said this before, the United Kingdom is my country. Now, I've had a few people who support Scottish independence coming onto my videos and saying they resent me throwing all nationalists with the same brush. So let me put this on record. Do I believe that all Scottish nationalists are anti-English racists? No, I don't believe that. I know there are some English supporters, and I don't believe that everyone who supports Scottish independence hates the English. But I believe many do. I believe there is deeply, deeply sectarian um, viewpoints. And by sectarian, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about English-Scottish sectarianism within SNP ranks. Um, you know, take a hidden camera to any sort of event with Scottish nationalism and I think you'll see the true ugly picture. I'm not saying every nationalist is a bad person, but I can never respect their opinion. I can never respect an opinion that is about breaking up my country. I mean, that makes no sense, does it? Really? It's like saying, by the way, I hate your brother, but please respect my opinion. The United Kingdom is my country. Simple as that. I also believe that if this comes around again, I don't believe it will. I'm optimistic that this divisive, unwanted, undemocratic referendum isn't going to happen again. If it does, if the SNP try and push it, I believe the British government will be well within its rights to simply say, no, we're not agreeing to this. We're, we're not uh, doing this. The rest of the world won't recognise it. Um, Russia will probably sit on the fence because Russia would like nothing more than for European states like the United Kingdom and Spain to break up, which is why if you look at the Kremlin mouthpiece RT, they take a very interesting choice of words when they cover the Scottish and Catalan referendums. Um, and I think you really need to read between the lines. Um, the idea of breaking this country up. Now, you could argue that Brexit is damaging this country. I voted Remain. I don't like Brexit. But when we leave the EU, we're still going to be a United Kingdom. That's the point. We were in the EU for 44 years. 46 years when we leave. Um, the United Kingdom 
the union between Scotland and England, is 400 years old. We have a shared island history going back generations, going back far longer than most modern states in the world today. That's not something to be taken lightly. And I don't mind admitting I've got very strong patriotic sentiments on this. Um, so I think the British government should simply refuse because the last referendum was supposed to be a once-in-a-lifetime referendum. Both Nicola Sturgeon and Alex Salmond alluded to that. They've already betrayed that. They have totally disrespected the view of the majority of Scots who voted to stay within the United Kingdom. Not once have I seen them try to respect that result. At the time, they made grudging sort of acceptances, but since then, all they have done is disrespected it. So they cannot demand that they get another referendum based on the outcome of the EU referendum. Incidentally, it doesn't necessarily follow that because someone voted Remain, they therefore want Scotland to become independent as some sort of protest against the UK. It's interesting, incidentally, um, seeing the stance the SNP has taken on the Catalan issue. You would think that they would be really for it, but they're fully aware that they need to respect Spain if they want re-entry into the European Union. I believe the Spanish government isn't going to be that foolish and, uh, you know, to play games and give Scotland, an independent Scotland, the idea that it get, could get into the EU just like that. Why should Scotland jump the queue when other potential member states like Bosnia and Ukraine have been waiting for years? You know, there's all those questions. But like I say, it doesn't follow that because someone voted Remain. I'm sure there's many Scots who voted Remain who also believe in the United Kingdom. Um, so I get that some people will be offended by the things I'm saying here. There will be Scottish nationals watching this that won't like it. So be it. I believe the UK government will be well within its rights to simply say, no, we shouldn't do what the Spanish done and, you know, use police overreach. That would be counterproductive. But I do think we should be more hard line, simply say no, not even humor the idea. Because it's unwelcome, it's unwanted, it's divisive. And it's totally betraying what the, I mean, the last time around, Cameron let the nationalists um, choose the date, choose the wording. So this time, I think the UK government should simply say no. There will be no second referendum, certainly not in our lifetime. 